Hello and welcome to another episode of Energy and Star Science Reading with myself, Thomas Janak. We are looking at the week of April the 26th to May the 2nd, 2021. Now, on the 27th, we have a full moon. And full moons do affect an awful lot of people. Because it is a full moon, it has to do a lot with the culmination of events. And also, um, when the barrel is full, so to speak, or when the, you know, the... Um, the jar, the jug is full. <laughs> what it means is, this is a time for action. Always a time for action. Here is why I'm mentioning it to begin with. Um, because um, historically speaking, whatever that means, <laughs> full moons are actually associated with increased violence, which is why they're being used uh, or have been used so many times in, um, you know, horror movies and um, werewolf movies and all that kind of stuff. But violence is a choice. And what I'm trying to say is, if you feel a bit more irate this week because the full moon is happening, then just throttle back because all that actually does, you know, moon phases and stuff, is for you to look at where you are in life. Now that there's a full moon, maybe it's time for you to reflect on the entirety of your being and then assess if you are where you want to be before you make new choices. So rather than being irate <laughs> with, with situations and people, just reflect. Because it will be easier when you are in a reflective mode um, rather than frust frustration or fr frustrated, bleh, you know what I mean? <laughs> that mode. <laughs> in a mode of frustration. Um, from from where you make your decisions is important, right? So be calm, really, really, really try to be calm. It's really, really important. In any case, <laughs> shall we uh, look? Obviously, that is part of the overall energy for the week ahead. But now we're looking at the overall energy for the week ahead properly. Let's see what we got for the week of April the 26th to, the, uh, to May the 2nd, 2021. We're in the star sign of Taurus. Um, here's the overall energy for the week ahead. We have the ancestor of memory, and guess what? The dancer of beginnings. So that makes an awful lot of, of sense. Because the ancestor of memory basically means, as a, as a phrase, that you must have thought about your life quite a bit. Be it positive, or negative, or indiscriminately, but you were probably thinking about certain things and have been thinking about them for a long time. And now you have the dancer of beginnings. Now, dancing, oftentimes in my sort of uh, book, means pussyfooting, right? Um, you, you, you are moving, but you're not quite moving away from things. So the overall energy for us is to realize what is it that occupies my thoughts? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? What am I actually thinking about, you know? And then because you have the dancer of beginnings, it's like maybe it is time to not just get stuck on thoughts, but to allow yourself to, sounds really weird, but that's just a phrase the guides give me, to begin again. It doesn't mean necessarily to begin anew. It just means like you're, you're, you're stopping, you're reflecting, and then look at where you are in life. As I said uh, before, we basically even had the, um, the messages here from the guides. And that's really the overall energy for the week, is to be reflective, stop for a second. And again, what I'm getting as well for, for all of us is, overthinking is not a good thing, because it doesn't lead you anywhere oftentimes. Because you have the ancestor of memory, means you do have all the answers you could ever need. What you do need is a, um, a leap of faith, if that makes sense. 
right? To boldly go where no man has gone before, so to speak, right? So that's what the overall energy says, says for us and for all of us, right? New beginnings are coming. Focus on what it is that occupies your, your thoughts and move forward, right? That was the overall energy. We're in the star sign of Taurus, which is the star sign we begin with. Just want to tick that off. And um, here is Taurus. Let's see what we got for Taurians. So, for Taurians, what the guides are saying to you this week is in order for you to make sense of your life, you need a bit of solitude. You need a bit of me time. This is a week for Taurians to step back from everything because instead of overthinking and feeling lost inside it all, <clears throat> you have um, a really lovely, beautiful card here, Wonders. So what the guides are saying to you is answers are coming, right? Look at the wonders of the world as you understand them. What, that, what I'm getting is, what that means is, you know, if you are spending a lot of time outdoors um, with nature, um, recharge your batteries, but on your own, have some solitude, um, you will probably find it much easier to make decisions because wonders, as, again as a phrase, also denotes that maybe whatever it is you've been doing or you are doing, maybe that's not the totality of what you could be doing with your life. So maybe look at, is there anything missing from your life and see um, how you can make that happen, if that makes sense, right? That was Taurus going into the next star sign, which is Gemini. So this is Gemini. The reason why I ticked that off, see what happens to me a lot because I only work here. Sometimes I have no idea when I finish a reading here or, or a star sign where I'm at because um, somehow when I work with, with, with spirit, I lose myself, if that makes sense. So I have, I, I have to tick off the star signs I did because it's not the first time um, I couldn't upload a video because I was reading a star sign twice, <laughs> right? Um, so going into Gemini, we're looking at the week of April the 26th to May the 2nd, 2021. You have the ancestor of knowing and the dancer of life. So again, overlapping energy because we had the term dancing, which means uh, pussyfooting, not quite sure where, even though there's movement, it might not be movement that leads away from stuff. You have the ancestor of knowing, which means slightly similar um, to um, Taurians for Gemini, you carry all the things you really need inside you already. You are not a person necessarily that needs validation from diplomas, certificates, other people. You have a lot of knowledge and an inner knowing, Geminis, and all the guides are saying is, well, this inner knowing is actually a blessing, right? Why don't you look at it? You understand? What I'm getting for, for um, Gemini is that somehow you're being either held back by um, situations and people, or you're holding yourself back. And it doesn't make much sense because you have the dancer of life, which means use your intuition, use your inner knowledge and decide what it is you wish to do with your life and then bloody go for it, right? And, they, they, and the guides are a bit pushy here with Geminis, but really what they're asking you to realize is everything you ever needed to make sense of situations is inside you. And yes, granted, there could be some blockages that probably can be explored uh, in, in other ways, but on a whole, your knowledge is inside you. Your knowledge is within, right? Just as it is with all of us. But in your case, Gemini's, the guides are sort of stressing it. Uh, it feels to me like if you're asking other people for advice, 
um, you might not get anywhere either because you might not trust it. And um, what the guides are saying to you is trust your inner knowledge because you have the dancer of life. Do something with your life. Go for it. And if you don't know how, just do what I often do. I say to the guides, help. And then, you know, it is much easier to manifest from there. Okay, that was Gemini going into the star sign of Cancer. Let's see what we got for Cancerians. Interesting. <laughs> you have the hunter of dreams and the hunter of honor. What the guides are saying to you is, if you are a person, which apparently you are, <laughs> a Cancerians, if you are chasing your dreams instead of stopping for a second and say, should I chase my dreams or should I chase the reality I wish to manifest. There's a difference, right? So, because you have the hunter of honor, which means you also want to be seen and acknowledged by people as a good person. And, sounds a bit weird, you know, and not as a person that sort of, you know, loses the plot. It's just what the guides are sort of telling me is here. Um, it doesn't matter. It never did matter what people ultimately think of you. Um, see, I can't pronounce the H, I think. Right? <laughs> what is important is that you're not just looking in into sort of, you know, that's what I'm dreaming about, that is my dream. And all the guides are saying is you, you, you never go there unless you realize that, that you are only option really is to at all times stay in the now because it is in the now and from the now that you can make all the decisions and need to make all the decisions right so my feeling is for cancerians it would actually be a good idea if you had a dream journal because obviously you have the hunter of dreams so there's very likely dream imagery that could help you um decipher almost um what it is you are seeking right and that's that that was cancerians now we're going into the next star sign which is leo leos like i said before we're looking at the week of april the 26th to may the 2nd 2021 leos you have the heron and the goat so the heron is obviously a bird that stands on one leg in the water and when the fish comes he goes thank you very much <laughs> and the goat is an animal that hangs on a cliff on two legs and doesn't fall what that means for you therefore leos is don't sweat anything don't sweat the small stuff don't be upset about things that don't work you will Sounds weird again. You will have your, your, your 15 minutes of fame. You will have your day in the sun. You will be fine ultimately because what the heron and the goat both stand for um, is renewal and is, even though there's a lot of mischievous energy in the goat, <laughs> um, you don't have to chase anything. You don't have to prove yourself. So if you are in a situation where you feel you need to prove yourself a lot, then reflect on that, because that might not be where you wish to be at this point in time, right? So, be calm, be cool, because you have the heron, he waits for the fish, which is your opportunity, he waits for the opportunity to come and just grabs it, and then the goat is on the cliff on two legs and doesn't fall, which means while you're being calm, you will still rise um, to the top of your game, so to speak, and you will be just fine. I think what is important for Leos is to not allow the pressure of life to get to you. Right? If that makes sense. Okay, that was Leos going into the next star sign, which is Virgo. Let's have a look at Virgo. Oh, 
Okay, Virgo, you are the first star sign this week um, <laughs> that is asked to look into your pain, look into your trauma. Because you have the god of rain and the snake. And what that means is that because you have the god of rain, which means you will always be renewed, right? You will not be let down by the universe at all. But rain, because it is renewal and recharging, therefore denotes that it is time for you to look into where does where do my trauma sit? Where does my trauma sit? Where is my pain? Um, and, and allow it to slowly leave you. Right? Really, really important. You may decide, or may have decided a long time ago, um, that you just carry all the crap of the past with you instead of realizing, actually, I am no longer willing to to think about things of the past that didn't work because that's what gives energy to whoever perpetrated uh, um, pain by keeping that memory alive, if that makes sense. Because you have the snake, the snake is, is the animal of protection. You know, when you go to the pharmacy, you see a snake around the cane. So it is the animal of health and protection. And what is interesting about snakes, apart from the bad re reputation they have, which is absolute bollocks, right? What is interesting about the snake is that if you give them a way out, they will take it. Also, a lot of snakes, such as in the garden, you find them on one side. They try to find rocks so they can propel themselves. If they are in the middle of your garden, you, you can just, you know, tell they're just trying to get through, if that makes sense. Um, so, in short, you are a person as well. If you are content and if you are being left alone by, by idiots, by people who are not good, you will be just fine and you just move on um, to, to greener pastures, pastures. But you need to also realize that not everybody is your friend and not everybody has been your friend and it is important um, to shed your skin, again, staying with the snake, to shed your skin and to go like, yeah, and I'm letting go of situations and people and memories of the past that hold me back and that make me feel not welcome and not whole. Right? So, that was Virgo going into Libra. Yeah. We're looking, looking at the week of April, the... Um, 26 to May the 2nd. I'm just gonna see this. I just saw my coffee cup over there. It might just be a sip in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, where was I? <laughs> Libra. Let's have a look what we got for Libras this week. Okay, the energy that I'm getting for Librans is actually adventurous. Because what you have is, um, you have, in a way, embracing and taking risks. So what they're saying is embrace everything that is there, embrace your life, good and bad. And instead of giving in, again, it seems to be a really big overlapping topic this week um, about, you know, um, situations that once caused issues, holding people back, because that's also what I'm getting for Libra. Embrace everything you've been through and always remember that everything and anything you've ever done, anything and everything you've ever experienced, good or bad, are and is and was learning curves. Right? And taking risks basically means to, to disregard, for want of a better word, the the pain if that makes sense and say like, you know what and and i'm and because it says here taking risks and the feeling is that maybe if you feel stuck maybe you should not continue doing what you're doing if it doesn't make you happy right so therefore this is a, is a time for for librans to reflect 
on where you're going in life. And again, déjà vu here, we, uh, you know, déjà vu as you say, <laughs> déjà vu as the Germans say, or maybe the French. <laughs> in in your case, really, Librans, what they're saying to you is, you can trust and you should trust that no matter what life throws at you, you will be just fine. And therefore, you can take risks, right? Um, and risks is sort of not a bad thing. What sort of comes to mind is um, um, just being weird as usual. Um, it's a scene in Star Trek in the original series where Captain Kirk says to someone, you know, risk is part of the game. And he talks about the Enterprise. This is why we abort her, right? So the, the point <laughs> that I'm sort of getting with this Star Trek thing is for you to realize that risk, taking risks every now and then, is not the end of things, but may lead to something you would never have explored, right? So that's what I'm getting for Libras. And oh, there was another card that I didn't see, but I think I mentioned it in the beginning that that's the energy I'm getting. And it is adventures. So I didn't see that card, but apparently the guides told me about it because I think I said to you uh, that the energy is adventurous. So, thanks guys. Um, that was Libra, going into Scorpio. Scorpios, you have two birds. You have the parrot and the owl. What that really means is, number one, you have two birds. Every time you have birds in your reading, it means whatever is happening in your life, step back, see things from a higher point of view, right? And see things as detached as you possibly can before you make decisions and before you act on things. So if people, <laughs> uh, sorry, if people, are, if people are pissing you off, Scorpios, then instead of fighting them, just realize, does it actually make sense to waste my time on this, right? Because, you know, things can get better and will be better if you trust that they will. So don't give in to any arguments because you have the parrot, which is um, an animal that has um, a variety of symbolic meanings and it have, has had this in, in many cultures. A lot, of, a lot of cultures looked at parrots and Unlike us idiots here in the Western world, where we kind of think, oh, the parrot, you know, you can sing and then you know, repeat phrases. They're, they're much, they're much more, they're much more, more versatile than that, because as an oracle, um, parrots are known to be able to predict weather. Now, that's not unique in the animal kingdom, but this is something that they're known for. And when you look at symbolism, predicting the weather means nothing else but, but saying, oh, I can see a cloud forming, right? And so it's realizing that you intuitively know exactly what's happening in your life. What you need to choose is to not live under the cloud, right? Because you have the owl, which is all about liberation, really, right? And also, remember the owl, how he can, you know, tilt his head and, you know, has a has a a much better view kind of thing without having to move out of its comfort zone, if that makes sense. Um, so what I'm getting for for um, Scorpios with the owl is is realizing that, that most owls, if not all owls, are really nocturnal birds. And so you get your best ideas and how to move forward at night. And the night is governed by the moon. Since we're having a full moon this week, take advantage of it. Have a little notepad and then every night, every evening, every night, you sit down and you write things down, just a couple of points, how your day was and how you want the day or the time, your, your, your life to progress from that. It's pointless this week for you to write it all off your chest, because we're not talking about um, trauma release for, for Scorpios. But if you write down a few things, or maybe even have a gratitude journal, you could still write down how your day went, and then what are you grateful for? Just pick three points, you know? But 
what I'm getting is because you you are um, this week one of your animal guides is is a, a nocturnal bird. Use the evening time also where you're a bit calmer to um, to see where your life is going. Right. So that's what I'm getting for for Scorpios. And um, now we're going into the next star sign, which is Sagittarius. Let's have a look at Sagittarians. Here we go. For Sagittarians, you have voyage and truth. In short, what the guides are saying to you is go within, right? Really, really important. Go within and allow yourself to journey, right? See, the depiction here on this um, deck of cards that I have, you can see this, there's a little whale here. Well, in the Native American um, creation myth, we were brought here as specks of dust to evolve on this planet and experience and accumulate everything there is to accumulate on this planet. But we came here in a whale. And so the whale is, is what the Native Americans often call the first mother. And so as you go within, you also reconnect deeply to parts of your soul that you probably feel have been lost. So this is a really good week for you to go within. And because your next um, card here is truth. Right? So... In short, as you go within, go on journeys, allow yourself to travel to wherever the guides want to take you. This is the way for Sagittarians this week to experience the truth again. And from there, you make new decisions. Okay? That was Sagittarians. Going into the next star sign, which is Capricorn. Let's have a look what we got for Capricorns. And I'm drawn to... Entirely different deck. Mm. Capricorns, you have the wolf and the great spirit. So, what that means is, you are a person that, that functions best when you are in charge. That is not an ego thing. This is not like, if I'm not in charge... You know, I'm not listening to anybody else. That's not what this is about because wolves are not necessarily loners. They're obviously all interested in having a, a pack, right? But the wolf is the animal that knows that unless I'm well, my pack is not doing well. So what they're saying to you is, quite clearly, um, look at yourself. Be in control of your life because you have to create spirit, which is basically... A symbolism for your guides saying oi pay attention we're right here and we help you with everything that we need to help you with but you need to be the person that says okay let's cut the crap right that's how I get it let's cut the crap where am I in life who holds me back what holds me back what am I wasting my time on Right, if that makes sense. So, so that's sort of the urgency that they give me. And then realize, no, if I'm in charge, I'm in control, then I can also put situations and people in their place. Right? So while they ask you not to be aggressive, because this is just not, it doesn't work, right? What they're saying to you is focus on what energies keep you feeling small and oppose them, right? That's really what I'm getting for um, sorry, Capricorns. Oh, cards are falling down. <laughs> for Capricorns, going into the next star sign, which is Aquarius. And after Aquarius, we only have Pisces and Aries left. But this is um, Aquarius. We're looking into the week of April the 26th to May the 2nd, 2021. Here's what we got for Aquarians. 
you have the shaman of courage and the spirit of initiation. What the guides are saying to you is it's really short and sweet this time. You are at crossroads. You also are at a point where it is important to embrace whatever new things are coming your way. Really, really important to um, embrace um, new opportunities, new beginnings, because you have the spirit of initiation, which means there's stuff coming to you that you have no idea about and that you probably haven't been in. So it doesn't feel necessarily as a progression of life. It feels more like, you know, have some courage, right, um, to make changes. And again, you you know, obviously what happens a lot is, and I get that, a lot of people just go and, and look, watch the overall energy and then go to their star sign. Have you, should you have done that? Um, for quite some star signs today, what the guides have mentioned is um, that it is time to be courageous in a way and allow for for new things that you probably haven't done before to happen if that makes sense and that's what the spirit of initiation tells you about you know new things will coming you are coming your way new opportunities are coming your way don't fight it because they're all meant to make life more fulfilling and better right that was aquarians going into pisces so now we have only star signs uh, two star signs left which is pisces and aries i'm a pisces myself so i'm very excited to to hear what the guides have to say to us um Pi uh, pisceans <clears throat> excuse me just want to take that off for pisces pisceans this week we have the rabbit and the horse so what the guides are saying to us is while this is a week where anything that is too much should be avoided. Maybe this is the week where it's like, you know what, I need a, a bit of time here um, for myself. While I'm not necessarily getting the word solitude, it feels like realizing that if you stay a little bit detached from everything, you can recharge your battery because we have the rabbit, which means... Again, it's all about opportunities, apparently, this week. The rabbit hole diversifies and, and goes everywhere. So what the guides are saying to you is if you reflect on your life and, and, and you think, I'm, I'm rather stuck here, this is what the guides make me feel, then all the guides are saying, um, uh, even though you may feel it is not, life is not going forward. It feels to me that what is important for Pisceans to realize this week is that life will continue and it will continue in a way that will be more fulfilling. It's just a phase that you're going through, whatever we're going through um, individually. Um, but you're being looked after and because the rabbit hole is so deep that's also where the guides are saying is it's time for Pisceans to reflect on what is working what isn't working and then rather than saying ah oh, bloody hell it's all so difficult is to say like okay that's a situation i would like to change and this is a situation i would like to change and literally ask the guides for what they do best, which is guidance, which is what I hope these videos provide by me talking to you through the guides, kind of thing. Because for, for Pisceans this week is really important. If we get too low energy, we're doing fake all. We're not doing anything. We're just removing ourselves and not doing anything. And that's not what the guides want from us. What they're asking us is to realize that we're also going, everybody here goes through cycles. And this might just be a cycle energetically where things feel a bit stuck. But the guides are saying is things will progress. But maybe as a Piscean who takes a bit of time for yourself, maybe it's time to say to the guides, help, 
right? Rather than, and you don't have to be specific. You just have to say to them, you know, that, that really doesn't work for me or this is what I want to change without the frustration and, and ask the guides to solve it for me, which also means solve it with me. And remember, you manifest on your energy. So if your energy isn't great at all, then it is much harder to manifest and to get somewhere in life, right? So that was that for, for, for Pisceans. Going into the last star sign of the week, we're looking at the week of April 26th to May the 2nd, 2021. Um, and the last star sign of the week is Aries. Let's have a look what we got for Aries. So, it again, very overlapping this week. You have wisdom and release. What they're saying to Aries is you already know where your life is heading. Right? Make no mistake about it. If you feel my life isn't going anywhere, that's probably because you allow other people and situations to hold you down, keep you down. Maybe you're just too nice. Who knows? But it is time for you to reflect. And then you have, um, as a phrase, you have release. So what they're asking you to do is to realize this is where I am in life, right? Use your knowledge, your inner knowledge, use the wisdom that you have already accumulated, right? And go like, no, and this is what I'm getting strongly, and this is not ego, but what I'm getting for Aries is for you to say, I am better than that. And I deserve better. And I claim better. And I claim more. Uh, because that will allow you to um, release that pent-up frustration that the guides make me feel for Aries. And this, it has to be released. Anything that somehow causes or caused pain sits inside you. And it's time for you to release it. And so allow yourself to have tearful moments. Allow yourself to not be too busy so that you can actually notice what your body and soul are telling you. Right? So that's all we had time for. This was another episode of Energy and Star Signs Reading with myself, Thomas Janak. Please, 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 please subscribe. Please like the Facebook page. And first and foremost, please share this widely so that other people can hopefully find the messages that the guides are providing for, for us. Right? Thank you so much. Bye-bye.